Hi everyone. Uh, I uh, figured I'd uh, spot time I could give you guys an update on my uh, welding skills here. Um, I posted a an initial video when I got my welder, my Everlast welder here uh, last winter, and uh, so I haven't used it much since, really. To be honest with you. Uh, but now I'm doing a, a bigger project, um, hoping to hone up my skills with this project. Um, I'm making a electric chainsaw sawmill, an actual sawmill, uh, not just a, as I did in the past. I showed you guys how to do it really cheap if you just want to saw up one piece of lumber. But uh, I do plan to have uh, an actual mill that eventually will be fully automatic. I'll have a little keypad and I'll key in if I want to make a 2x4 or a 2x8 and I'll do it by itself so so this is going to be the piece of aluminum that's going to be holding the chainsaw um, so you see this is the chainsaw here and basically what I did is I cut out um, a shape of the chainsaw so it can actually fall through um, and then I've got these two holes here so those two holes will be drilled through this piece and this is grooved out so that the, the chain which is a little wider than the bar uh, can slide can can run through here and then I have a similar piece for the top here that goes on top and there's a little bit of shimming I have to do here on the edges so the bar is about an eighth of an inch thick and then I have to sh build this up an eighth of an inch eighth of an inch so this frame here that I'm building is uh, basically there as a strengthening member so this is quarter inch thick aluminum and um, so the back here is going to have the raised lower mechanism so the, the bar will be basically down this way cutting the wood so the way I cut this this shape out of there uh, you can see these these round holes here so that's just basically a hole saw I put hole saw holes at every point where I was turning you can see in the uh, in the throwaway piece here all the hole saw holes and then um, I actually just used the sawzall to cut through here. You can use the jigsaw as well, but uh, at the time I, I had only found one blade for my jigsaw and I was afraid that if I broke it, I'd be kind of stuck. Um, but the jigsaw, jigsaw does work really well with this aluminum, so I've since bought more blades and I'll probably do the rest with the jigsaw. These pieces here are just cut on the table saw. The cut quality is very nice. You can see fairly and then you can get a nice straight straight cut with that and and these grooves were just basically run over multiple passes this clamping mechanism will hold the the bar in place and then um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing with like the details of how I'm gonna how I'm gonna do this this guide thing but um, the lift mechanism is gonna be this very cheap uh, it's just a, from Princess Auto, it's just a trailer jack and uh, I took the, the handle off so I could put the drill on here so just run the drill and this thing goes up fast, fairly up and down fairly fast so that's going to be lifting and lowering the chainsaw into the log so one big thing I found when I was doing the aluminum welding uh, the, f the first time I welded in that initial video one, my shade was too dark I couldn't see what I was doing so that was a big thing of course uh, <clears throat> I couldn't see the puddle you, you need to be able to see the puddle being formed when you're uh, melting the two base metals uh, <clears throat> the other thing I found was that uh, I didn't have my uh, my gas set quite right so once I got that that I, you know this this isn't buffered this is just this is how that looked there's no dark nothing Uh, melting quarter inch aluminum 
actually is not that easy. You need a lot of heat. It, uh, it's right at the limit of this welder. Uh, uh, I'm using the, the foot pedal and I'm using my knee to activate the foot pedal. I, found, I find that works pretty good. Uh, and, uh, and then I can use both hands to kind of hold the torch steady as I'm going across. So. I was a little hard on the knees. Ooh. <laughs> all right, so hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, I won't show it all, but I'll I'll uh, loop back and show you guys. Uh, of course, the sawmill when it's, uh, once I get this thing built. Hey everybody, gorgeous deer here on my land. Uh, so I figured I'd get out here today and do a prototype test. Now, mind you, bear in mind it's a prototype. It's not a finished product and today the purpose of this test is to validate my theory that um, <clears throat> cutting only part way into a piece of wood cuts faster than cutting all the way through it. So I use these prototype tests to confirm certain theories. Uh, you know, I do everything by the scientific method, right? I do a theory, I test it. If it works, then I proceed. So what I'm doing now is I'm testing this cutting theory. Once <clears throat> I've confirmed that this cutting theory works, I'll do the next steps, which will be to, uh, um, to complete the sawmill. So right now the sawmill is partially built out of wood. And here's what it looks like. So I've got my, my uh, stands made out of wood. And this is just a temporary stand for the log here that I just did for doing the test cut. I've got the chainsaw mounted here to this trolley. So this is a trolley with some, uh, just used some cheap ball bearings here on an aluminum beam I had in the back. Uh, this is not going to be the final beam. Final beam will be a steel beam. But I had this, so it was free. This aluminum I got basically pretty cheap. So that didn't cost me much. These bearings were like three bucks a piece, so 12 of them. So that was the most expensive part. And I got a jack here. And then what I did, these are just temporary. I just used drawer slides just for doing prototyping testing. Eventually this will be something a bit more heavy duty. Um, and same thing on the other end there. So, uh, but yeah, and up and down here, I've got also, it's just a drawer slide. This won't last very long. Uh, this, the ball bearings will get gummed up with some uh, sawdust. So, but it, it serves the purpose, which is to 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 test my concept here uh, of the cutting. So I'll show you guys what the cutting looks like.
So as you can see, I saw some fine tuning to do with the, the log handling and all the the, the, the posts that hold up the, the central beat, the gantry. But uh, the point of this is just to show that this little saw uh, is able to, to, to do some lumber. With a, I would say faster than uh, than likely a uh, single pass. Two passes, two passes of the of the saw here is probably faster than a single pass. Okay, so I'm still testing cutting theories here. So now I'm going to do a full cut through that cedar. It's about 10 inches, and uh, whereas a while ago I did uh, two or three cuts, just to see difference in time, how long it takes, and uh, so, so to be basic theory I'm going on is the more teeth you have the less and less each tooth cuts into that wood so um, and then you have a kind of a rubbing effect uh, along the wood so if you have say 10 teeth cutting and they're each, they're each taking one tenth of the horsepower of the saw uh, of the power of the saw so so if you have five teeth uh, then those five teeth will be able to dig into the wood further and you can actually see a difference in the sawdust the uh, the size of the uh, uh, the chunk the the chunk of sawdust being taken. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting with the nose solely with the nose of the saw and uh, using this 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 uh, concept here. But now now I'm going to test the full cut just to show the difference because I I don't have a lot of experience cutting cedar. It's a little little bit softer. So and then on the on the video I'll be able to compare the two uh, techniques. Just calculate the time. So at this end, the wood is uh, about 10 inches. And 13 inches at the back end. So there, I just tripped the breaker. Second time tripping the breaker. So as you can see, I tripped the breaker twice during the uh, the full cut through. So it's it's much much harder on the saw to do it that way. Uh, the quality of the wood, the cut is beautiful, just beautiful. I mean, look at that. That's a gorgeous piece of wood. Yeah. All right. So this next cut I'm going to do is about five inches of wood. It's not quite a third. I just. Because I know this this far the this end of it is a little bit thinner, so it should average around four inches. So let's give this a try. So I got a lot of things to do, fix this thing, get this uh, to something that uh, works reliably um, and is precise. But yeah, first thing I had to check is to confirm my theory, which uh, you doing the uh, the um, two nails and a string technique in a previous video, 
I, I, I realized that this saw, using this technique, I could use to literally cut through 18 inches of wood in maybe three passes, something like that. I, I, I could probably do six inches easily through this. All right, so I hope you guys like this part one, just trialing out the, the, the cutting technique. Uh, I am very happy with it. It does seem to work really well. I obviously need to finish the rest of the sawmill, which is going to be metal stands. I uh, just got to have metal base and it'll be a longer, I'll use a longer 4x4 or steel beam. Uh, so I can, uh, should be able to handle, well, I'm going to buy a 16 inch, a uh, 16 foot long beam. So I should be able to handle about 14 feet, uh, foot logs, which should be plenty for anything I want to do here on the property. Um, and yeah, this little electric saw is really happy doing the job. I, 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 I was, uh, I theorized it would do, and uh, you guys can see it's doing a nice fine cut. Uh, here's a little bit of misalignment, but that should be fixed when I do the proper log sand and the uh, proper uh, gantry uh, uh, stands as well. So this should be gone, and I should get, you know, maybe a small little groove here, uh, but overall, it should give me some nice lumber. So bye for now. So as I was uh, welding this thing on my knees, that made me realize that the easiest way would be to just have this thing stand up. So I used that table, so the, the little table I showed you guys. I popped the legs down so it's lower to the ground so I can weld standing up. So always easier to do things standing up than on your knees. Uh, Jack doesn't get on his knees for nobody. Nothing or no one. So anyways, <laughs> moral of the story, if you can do things standing up, do it standing up. Don't get on your knees. There's no good way to say that, is there? <laughs>